Hey, if you're looking for a free financial projection template, then you have come to the right place because we have built a free tool here that I'm gonna walk you through. This is a one year uh, financial projection template that includes a income statement or profit and loss, a cash flow statement and a balance sheet, um, all broken down monthly for the first 12 months. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use this, how to fill it out, and also how to access some additional, more advanced templates if you need something a little bit longer, like a five-year model or maybe something industry specific. I'll show you where you can find those as well. Before I dive in, just a little bit of background. My name's Adam Huxima. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And I, I spent about 12 years as an SBA lender and helping clients get SBA loans. During my time as the executive director of an organization called Bankable, we approved about 1500 SBA loans. And, and that kind of that work prompted me to build Projection Hub because a lot of our clients uh, really struggled with the financial projection uh, portion of the loan application process. And so we were asking our clients for projections and clients would struggle. And so that's, that's how I ended up here. That's how we decided to end up building Projection Hub to try to help solve that problem for for clients that I was experiencing. So with that background out of the way, let me dive in and show you how this template works. Okay, so this template is built with uh, a handful of different tabs here. So we've got these blue input tabs. And so you'll need to input information in, in each of these input tabs. And then the green tabs are kind of the output, the output of the projections. Uh, so let's start with the input assumptions tab here. So you'll be able to put in your company name, the projection start month, if you are personally investing any cash into the business yourself, and then any starting inventory balance that you might have. And then you can add some assumptions like inventory as a percentage of direct materials. Uh, so this basically just makes sure that on your balance sheet as you sell inventory, if and again, this is if, if you have inventory, if you're uh, selling services and you don't have inventory, then I would just put zero here. But you know, let's say you're you're a bakery and you're you're gonna keep some amount of inventory on the shelf, even just ingredient inventory to to help you know have something on hand. So this percentage just helps you kind of make sure the balance sheet keeps some inventory on hand at all times. The accounts receivable balance. This is the same kind of concept. If you carry an accounts receivable balance where your customers owe you something, you could put a percentage of your revenue that you expect to, to hold on your balance sheet as accounts receivable. And the same thing with accounts payable. So just to be clear, accounts receivable is what your customers will owe you and accounts payable is what you will owe other vendors. And so you can, by using a percentage here, it allows us to kind of scale the, these balance sheet items as your business grows, these items are likely to scale with that. So if you want to keep things simple, you could put 0% for all of those and you know not have to not have to have assumptions there. On the fixed asset side, you can add in uh, different fixed assets with a category for the fixed asset. You can add a value and a life expectancy and then a salvage cost. So for example, leasehold improvements would be, let's say you are, let's stick with our bakery example here. You're opening a bakery, you're gonna to have to spend $60,000 to build it out, to improve it, to, you know, to paint, to build the, the kitchen out, you know, and, and build a front, uh, front seating area maybe, or a display case, those are sorts of things that you're gonna to need to build out. So that, that's what leasehold improvements would be. And then, you know, equipment, furniture, and signage are all pretty self-exclamatory. So you can, you know, put the value or the cost of those items in there, how long it's going to take for those items to uh, de fully depreciate or how long they you think they'll last. And then the salvage cost is just after, after the useful life, after 10 years, how much do you think you could sell that item for? So I usually just put zero in here. Maybe you sell your equipment for a few hundred bucks or something as salvage, but I think easier to just put that at zero. And then the purchase during which month of operation, you could probably just leave that as zero as well as if you're just starting. But let's say you're, let's say you're an existing business and you're wanting to get a loan to expand and maybe you already own all these items. So you could have month zero here for these items, but you are going to, you know, maybe you're going to get a new truck 
and that's going to be maybe it's a food truck for the bakery and that's what you're expanding that's how you're expanding the business so for that i'd put you know let's say we're going to do fifty thousand. it's going to have a 10-year life expectancy zero salvage cost but this we're going to do month one because this is going to be in the future like once we you know maybe receive a loan that we're trying to get so let's say we we're trying to get an SBA loan down here for a hundred thousand. It's going to go towards helping us get the food truck and build out and maybe build up that business. That's going to happen in month one at a 10% interest rate over a 10 year term. So that's how you could enter that in. Now onto the revenue side, what you can do here is just put in the number of units sold. So pretty simple, just put in the number of units that you expect to sell each month and then what a breakdown of what those units are so it could be again if it's a bakery it could be you know donuts muffins coffee maybe maybe something like that and then i guess these prices don't make a whole lot of sense um, anymore but you know you get the idea so you could put this in as two dollars and this is three dollars and your four dollar coffee right and you put in your your labor cost for that and your material cost. So I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this for now, just for example's sake. But yeah, so you can put those different assumptions in of what you're selling, the labor cost it takes to make the item, the material cost. So this could be the food cost that it takes to make the item, and then what percentage of these units sold up here? What percentage is this is is this item? So we could say 20% is product one. 60% of our units sold is service one, 20% is service two, and so on, right? And then you can apply a annual growth rate. This, this is an annualized growth rate. So we're actually increasing, we're applying that growth rate immediately, like in the, in the next month. So it's not like prices would just stay the same and then jump 5% the, in the next year. It's like each, each month they're kind of incrementally going up at a 5% annualized rate. Okay, so on the other expense tab, you have the ability to add in some expenses. You can add the expenses as either a fixed dollar amount or a uh, percentage of total revenue or a certain type of revenue. So a good example of that could be, you know, maybe you're gonna spend $500 a month on advertising and you just plan to spend that each month. And then a percentage of revenue item might be like transaction fees or credit card fees that might be 3%, let's say 3% credit card fee, and that's a percentage of revenue based. So moving on to our salaries tab here, we can put in a manager or supervisor, for example, put in their annualized salary. So again, we could put uh, annual salary. You can put in your employer taxes here, the benefits, so we put in like 10% of the annual salary as benefits, but you could set that to zero if you want. Then you can set what month is that position that manager gonna start. So they're gonna start in month one, but the supervisor is not gonna start until month five, for example. Ending in month 12 is a 12 month projection. And then how many of that particular employee do you expect to have? So based on all those assumptions, you've, you've filled everything out. And now we get to our output pages. So here's our at a glance that produces a handful of charts and graphs for you. And then there's some examples here of other charts and graphs that would be available in our premium and industry specific templates. So this is our free template, but we do have about a hundred different industry specific templates that are five year financial models. And so you can click this button here to, to access and see the library of templates that we have that, you know, are a lot more detailed and industry specific. And those would have additional graphs and charts as well as additional years. Uh, but here's the, here's the uh, income statement. So you can see a one year income statement broken down by month, cash flow statement, and a balance sheet all broken down by month for that first year. Again, kind of locked there for future years, but you get to see an idea of you know, what that would look like in, in our premium template. So we're gonna put a link in the description of the video below to also to access our premium templates. And as a thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, we'll also put a link to a form that you can fill out and, and get a coupon code for uh, access to one of our premium templates as well. So we hope that's been helpful to you. If you have any questions about this free template, just uh, reach out to me and let me know and be happy to try to help. Thanks.